Last year, after a quarter-century hiatus, the United States resumed production of non-weapons-grade plutonium-238. Plutonium produces heat as it decays, and that heat can be converted into energy to power spacecraft. The unit is called a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, or RTG, and they're common on missions exploring areas where sunlight is dim or fleeting. Notably, the Curiosity rover has an RTG. But not all plutonium launched into space stays there. In 1970, plutonium on board Apollo 13's lunar module Aquarius came back with the crew, leaving NASA to figure out how to deal with the dangerous material. On Apollo missions, 8 pounds and 96 ounces of plutonium fed the RTG that powered the Apollo Lunar Surface Experiment Package, or ALSEP. ALSEP was a suite of instruments designed to return seismic, atmospheric, temperature, and particle data from the moon's surface. But Apollo 13, of course, never made it to the lunar surface, and the lunar module became the lifeboat the crew needed to get back to Earth safely. Carrying the ALSEP home added another layer to the already complex task of saving the Apollo 13 crew. NASA had to figure out how to get the lunar module to re-enter the atmosphere at a point where the RTG wouldn't come down in a populated area. Luckily, or unsurprisingly perhaps, NASA had planned for such a contingency mission. After a few well-executed maneuvers, the Apollo crew jettisoned their lunar module, and it came down safely over the Pacific Ocean. Subsequent surveys by the Atomic Energy Commission found that there was no radioactive fallout from the area where the lunar module Aquarius had landed. The return of Apollo 13's plutonium. It happened on the way back from space. <laughs>